Hi everybody, Thomas at Rebel Income here. Market experts love to talk tech, but they usually tend to focus on just a few of the buzziest names out there on the cutting edge of the latest tech fad. Today I want to focus on one of the giants in the tech sector that doesn't get a lot of attention in market media anymore. That's Cisco Systems, a company that most people think of first for networking hardware and services, but that really does so much more. They're a leader in many of the latest advancements in new technologies, including cloud computing, the Internet of Things, 5G, and more. Stock's down about 16% from its high point for the year, which brings up our classic question. Is this tech leader a smart buy right now, or just a sucker's bet? Let's find out. Cisco has dropped from its yearly high, which was reached in August of this year, at around $58. And that downward trend is really easy to see. We can see it moving downward along with our 20-day moving average down to a low earlier this month at around $48. From that point, the stock has been rallying, has picked up some momentum, and is currently sitting a little above $50 per share. It is still below the 200-day moving average, which I like to use as a representation of the long-term trend. That trend has started to flatten out over the last month or so, and right now should be providing resistance for the stock at about $51 per share. This is an interesting bullish level two pattern that confirmed itself a few days ago and has been showing some positive bullish momentum, but also looks to be reaching just about the end of that short-term rally right now with resistance so close to the stock's current price. Does that mean that it's not a good buy or that short-term traders should stay away? Not necessarily. In fact, with the stock still sitting significantly below that August high, it's still worth taking the time to dig into the fundamentals to see where the stock's current value price actually is and to determine if that is something that is worth taking on as a potential new long-term opportunity. Cisco has a history of balance sheet strength, and that's still true today. Over the last year, free cash flow was about $17.5 billion, and that does mark a useful increase from about $15.5 billion a year ago. Interestingly, however, free cash flow did decline in the most recent quarter from a little over $19 billion. Cisco's balance sheet is reflected by cash and long-term debt shows fortress level strength. And when I say fortress level strength, I mean that this is a company with more than $23.5 billion in cash as of the last quarter against just about $6.6 .6 billion in long-term debt. Cisco could pay off all of their long-term debt and have just a little under $17 billion in cash left over. That's extremely strong. We can also see that cash has increased over the last year from about $22 billion 12 months ago. Along with free cash flow, cash has tapered back from a little over $26 billion in the last quarter. At the same time, long-term debt has also decreased over the last year. And this is an interesting element when you consider that available cash has increased over the last year. Long-term debt 12 months ago was about $17.6 billion. That means they've liquidated about a billion dollars in long-term debt while also increasing their overall cash over the same period by more than $1.5 billion. How is that possible? Well, the company's operating profile provides a pretty good indication. You can see that net income over the last year was very strong at about 23.4%. This is a company that has a historical pattern of strong operating margins. In the last quarter, that number increased to about 24.8%. That's a modest improvement. Nonetheless, it is showing that the company's efforts to maintain costs and drive profitability are still succeeding and are progressing nicely. Cisco is also one of very few tech stocks that offers a dividend. At $1.56 per share and their stock's current price a little bit above $50, that translates to a useful dividend yield a little bit above 3.11%. And that's enough to make the dividend an interesting element to combine on whatever you think the stock's overall upside actually is right now. That's an important element to consider when you factor in that my valuation analysis for the stock puts a fair value target a little bit above $55 per share, which is just about 10% above the stock's current price. 
If you factor in that 3% annualized dividend right now, along with that 10% upside, you get a pretty functional opportunity of a little over 13% in this stock right now. Well, those are the fundamentals, and those provide some interesting elements that I think make considering Cisco as a long-term opportunity a practical argument. What about overall reward to risk? As I try to emphasize in every single one of these videos, whether or not you actually make an investment decision should also depend on your evaluation of what the overall stock's actual reward is compared to how much risk you may be exposed to if the stock were to drop below its current price. So let's go back to our charts and take a look. The stock's last pivot low, which is a, a level I often like to use to identify current support, is sitting back a little bit below $48. I'm going to put that at about $47.50. Now in this case, I don't call $47.50 current support for Cisco because of the way that it's lifted above the 20-day moving average. And that means that that line should provide some support for the stock if it were to begin to retrace off of the rally that it has been following over the last couple of weeks. That level is about a dollar above that pivot low at about 48.50. I do put immediate resistance at the 200 day moving average right now since the stock is starting to approach that line. And moving averages are pretty good indications of near term support and resistance levels. That level right now is at about $51. The big question right now is if the stock can push above $51, how much upside is there likely to be to next resistance? Again, I fall back on identifying previous pivots to try to forecast where I think those levels are likely to be. We can see that the stock had reached a high a little bit above $53 during the fall months of this year before it dropped down to its current low. I'm going to put that peak at about $53.50. With these numbers in mind, we can start to think about what the stock's overall reward to risk looks like. I'm going to talk about immediate re reward to risk right now using current support and resistance levels. With the stock's immediate resistance at $51, that means there's about $1 of upside from the stock's current level right now against about $1.50 of downside down to about $48.50. That means that right now there's not really a good opportunity to think about Cisco in terms of taking a very short term trade. You're just actually a little bit more risk than there is immediate upside. That profile changes a little bit if we do see a break above 51. And in that case, reward to risk shifts to about $2.50 of upside against less than a dollar of downside since 51 will become new support assuming that break above 51 happens. That changes the trading profile, especially for short-term traders, which could make the stock look very interesting at that point. From a valuation standpoint, the overall opportunity isn't as high as I usually like to see, but when you consider the overall value proposition, about 10% with the stock's attractive dividend, I do think that Cisco right now represents a pretty good buy. Thanks everybody. I hope this has been useful as always. If you like this video, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel by clicking right here. You can also learn more about my Rebel Income System by checking out this video. If you'd like to subscribe to my trading alerts and my reports, you can go ahead and visit my Patreon page. The link to that is in the description for this video. Thanks again. This is Thomas at Rebel Income. Talk to you again soon.